got a little red butt. Look at it. Yeah. What's up, Sue Chefs? Get ready with me. Just kidding. <laughs> What's up, Sue Chefs? How are you guys doing today? But I just wanted you guys to know that I have been missing you. Today is the day that we are reunited. I'm so excited. Listen, we have a lot to do today, so I'm going to keep the intro nice, short, and sweet. Number one, if this is your first time here on Sue Chef, welcome. And if you've been here before, I just want to say welcome back. For those of you who this is their first time, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Right next to it, there's a little bell. It's called post notifications. If you want to continue to watch Sous Chef and see what we're preparing every week, make sure you hit that bell and click all. You want to see every single thing that comes out of the Sous Chef channel. Number three, if you like the content after you've watched it or even if you just know that you're just going to love it because it's me, make sure that you hit that thumbs up. I want all the likes that I can have. Thank you. Feel free to interact with me. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to be talking. If you like what you see, feel free to drop a couple of comments down in the comments section. You just want to show me some love. Make sure you leave me a comment. I don't want anybody to ever say, hmm, how do I make that? Like, mm, go to the sous chef. She'll tell you exactly how. All right. So today, y'all, I'm about to take this jacket off. Because I definitely fell on the floor. <laughs> All right. So today, y'all, we are taking it home. And I always say home. Like, my family is from Texas, but I want y'all to know my dad was in the Navy. Um, I lived everywhere. I was born in Virginia Beach. I spent most of my formative years in Seattle. So shout out to all my Seattleites that are watching this. Hey. But I definitely always talk about Texas and Louisiana because that's where my roots are. When I was in Seattle, I worked for this company that took kids um, basically just took kids on experiences for spring break and one summer or one spring break I should say we took the kids down to Texas um, on our way to Louisiana to you know begin helping with some of the um, Hurricane Katrina relief and we sat and hung out with my family and ate fried chicken and mac and cheese and everybody was like oh my gosh is this Texas food and I'm like yeah it's what we eat in Texas like they're like oh my gosh it's so good and I'm like yes Yes, it is. So today I'm bringing it back to the Lone Star State. I'm doing my ASMR. <laughs> so we are making Texas style chili today. And what makes Texas style chili a little bit different from other chilies that you might be familiar with is that when we make Texas style chili, we don't put any beans in it. There are two kind of styles out there. There's more of a gravy style chili, and then there's a tomato based chili. The chili that I use is tomato based. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. I love this chili. And you're gonna see it again because I'm gonna reuse it when I make Frito pie. Remember this, remember this, remember this. <laughs> so let's get into the video. All right, we're back. We're about to get started on our chili. So, chili requires chili. So, in today's chili, I'm gonna be using three chiles, okay? So, um, or peppers, depending on where you're from, you might call it something different. To me, peppers are bell peppers, and chiles are spicy. I don't know, whatever. We're going to be using the illustrious jalapeno, poblanos, and habaneros. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we get those peppers nice and roasty. We're gonna take them out. Um, we don't cut them yet. So whenever you're roasting peppers, you basically want to roast them until they have a dark brown skin around them. Um, at that point, that brings out all of the spicy hot flavors that you're looking for. And then you can remove the skin or keep it on. Some people do different things, but you, at that point, you're ready to use the pepper. But first, you gotta roast it. So, let me show you what we did. All right, so as you can see, we have our peppers here. We've already washed them off. So what I've done, I've just simply covered a cookie sheet with um, foil. Look at that. It's got a little red butt. Look at it. Yeah. And I'm simply gonna lay these out 
Um, I'm gonna roast all of these at the same time because I'm tight like that, okay? I do have a roasting setting on the oven, so I turned that on. It's preheating right now. I turned it to roast at 425 degrees. So you're gonna be looking for some dark brown spots that are gonna kind of bubble up on the pepper. And that's how you know that um, you've released a whole lot of nice flavors. So we're gonna get that started and move on to the meat. So we've gone ahead and put all of those chilies and peppers and whatever into the oven so that they can roast. I'm gonna time it and I'll let you know how long it took when I take them out. Is that okay? <laughs> Moving on. If it's that okay, I'm sorry. I can just exit out of this video right now. But for right, okay. So the oven's done. I put it in a little bit early, okay. The next part that we need to get ready for our, for our chili is whatever protein we're using. And in this case, because Texas chili does not include beans, um, we are gonna put some beef in there to kind of make sure that we have a really nice flavor, right? A really nice hearty chili. We don't just want tomatoes in our chili. Um, but I've seen people use mushrooms, I've seen people use turkey, you know. It's really whatever you want, but this group, beef, because that's what's for dinner. There's a little bit of controversy on what type of cut of meat, um, especially in the beef world, what type of cut of beef you should use when it comes to chili. Ultimately, um, I would say that the easiest meat that you can use if you want to, um, if you want to do a quicker chili, the easiest meat for you to use is ground beef, hands down. Like your ground beef is pretty much going to have the same consistency no matter how you cook it or what you do to it. Ground beef is durable, like the Duracell battery. My, my kitchen is doing some crazy things right now. However, for this particular pot of chili, um, I am going to be using stew beef. Um, at least that's what it says here on the package. Um, organic stew meat, grass-fed. Again, I try to make sure that all as much of the meat as I use as possible in most of these recipes is organic, is natural. Um, because one, I just think you get a better flavor, but you don't really want to eat it. I'm telling you that right now. But that's for a different, basically what it is, it's just chuck roast that's been cubed. I've even seen some people use short ribs and brisket, but to me, I just, I just don't see myself putting brisket in anything but in my belly. I would eat it though. I sure will. Yes, I would. I would eat it. Chili's supposed to be fast. Chili's supposed to be like, oh yeah, I guess I'm gonna make some chili. I guess I'll do chili for dinner. It's like making rice. That's what it's supposed to be. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm not making rice, but I am making cornbread. Okay, whenever you're putting meat into something for it to stew in all of those juices and all of the flavors that you put into it. So we're gonna get this stew meat ready. Um, and then we're gonna bring it over to the cast iron and sear it up and get it ready for a Dutch oven. Be right back. All right, you guys. So we have our stew meat here in our cast iron skillet. And you definitely wanna make sure that you are doing this on a high heat. But now I'm about ready to throw some of that good old house seasoning on it. Just gonna cover it with a nice layer because if you've watched any of my videos, you know that everything should taste good. So we're just gonna let it sit like that. You're gonna start here at sizzling. And when it does that, we're gonna do what we do, baby. All right, so we're getting a nice little sear on this. We're gonna start moving it around here in the cast iron. Look at that. Look at that. See that sear? That's the kind of sear that we're looking for. A nice little crust on it, and then we'll keep it moving. All right, so we're about done. Go ahead and add it into our Dutch oven so it can just rest. Um, again, you don't need to cook it all the way here. And I've used my um, sawdust spoon to move everything over. About like that, and that'll do it. Look 
look at these beautiful peppers. These are our roasted chiles for our Texas chili. I'm gonna put it in the food processor. I need the moisture from the onions to really be able to blend these chiles together. Ooh, look at that. It's even better lighting. Why not shoot that shot? Should have shot my shot over here. So, whoo, let's cut pepper in mine. Right here are the jalapenos. This one and these two large ones are poblanas and the orange, beautiful orange ones are habanero peppers. We just roast one Vidalia sweet onion for these peppers. All we're going to do is take the stem off and drop them in. And we are going to make our own And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the base of our chili. This is what we're going to do. We have all of our beef here in our Dutch oven. I have it on medium heat. It's going to take the remnants of what we used earlier and pour it back into the pan. I'm also going to add 12 ounces of beer to the bottom of that cast iron skillet. Still a little bit warm to make sure we pick up all of those nice beefy flavors. And we're going to add that back to the pan as well. Next, we're gonna take our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chili paste and drop it right in. It's already spicy, baby. We're just gonna stir that in a little bit. Next, we have approximately 16 ounces of tomato paste. So we're gonna turn this heat back up to a little bit of a medium high. We're gonna start to incorporate that tomato paste. Now it looks like chili. At least it's starting to. I know y'all were scared for a second, like, I ain't never had no green chili. Calm down. It's okay. Relax. I'm a doctor. But we're not done. Two cups of beef broth. To preserve the color, we're going to add some chili powder. Doesn't need a lot. I'm just gonna shake probably about two tablespoons. Give it more of that brown color that many people are accustomed to. An eighth a cup of salt. And because I just firmly believe that um, you need a little bit of sugar to break down anything tomato, and because I just realized I put four habaneros in it, we're going to add two tablespoons of raw sugar stir that in. And because this is sous chef, we're going to add two tablespoons of garlic powder. And last but not least, we're going to take two bay leaves and just stick them right in there. We will need to find these because um, it doesn't taste good when you eat a bay leaf. For now, we're going to let this simmer for probably another hour and a half and then there's a few more things that we need to add now that our chili has been cooking for about a hour um, we have here a combination of nutmeg and ground cinnamon half a tablespoon nutmeg half a tablespoon of ground cinnamon as well as oregano we have about um, half a tablespoon of oregano here and you're probably wondering why there's a cutting board because we have to add one of my favorite ingredients. Bacon. So I have four slices of um, thick cut bacon. Um, and we are gonna throw this into our chili along with these last couple of ingredients. And we're gonna let it continue to cook down for about another hour and then we will eat. Here we are with our tray of ingredients. Like I said, half a tablespoon of oregano, half a tablespoon 
of cinnamon and half a tablespoon of nutmeg together there. We're gonna stir that in before we add our bacon. Chili is an experience, you guys. For the last hour, it's been cooking at about a low heat. I'm going to turn the temperature back up to a medium so we can make sure this baking gets all the way together. We're going to let it sit and simmer, like I said, for about another hour. And then we'll be ready. Chili will be served. All right, you guys, our chili is done. Look at that. I gotta find my bay leaves. There's one, one to go. Where are ya? There's number two. I can't wait to eat this with you guys. Let's go to the table. Hey, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to eat with you. I already have my spoon in my hand. I just got this really fancy new cutting board because I realized that y'all probably couldn't see the rice on my other cutting board because white rice, white cutting board don't really go together. Sorry about that. So I bought a new cutting board with white bowls and we are about to get into our chili. I just want to show this to you guys. This is Texas style chili that we've been creating literally all day. Um, in this chili, we don't do beans. We make our chili in Texas. It's very spicy, y'all. I tasted it probably right before I put the bacon in, if you watched. Um, and it was so spicy. I don't know what I was thinking putting four habaneros um, in one pot of chili. That's insane. But um, obviously when you add cinnamon, nutmeg, oregano, and bacon, it's gonna definitely smooth out a lot of those spicy flavors. So I have three different bowls here today. I am going to try one just with classic cheese here. And then the next one, I'm going to do sour cream and cheese. sour cream disappearing and then on the third one I'm gonna do it fully dressed so what I will say is that everybody in Texas definitely doesn't eat their chili like this but this is what I do okay all right I didn't show this on camera but if you can see right next to me I made cornbread listen I generally do not like cornbread. I'll be the first to tell you I'll do cornbread. This is the first cornbread I've ever made from scratch. Shout out to It's So Good, you gave me the idea to do this. Um, I put it in my cast iron. I'm hoping it's really delicious. I'm gonna cut into it and we're gonna have some. Hopefully it's moist. Because the main reason I don't like cornbread is because it's dry. You be choking on cornbread like a Popeye's biscuit. I'm going to cut into this. Not too bad, it doesn't feel dry. It feels like a cake, y'all. Cornbread, let me try that. Y'all not here for cornbread. I 
So let's get into this chili. Texas chili with cheese. you to know if it wasn't good I would definitely tell it myself or I'd be like oh and don't forget to add this thing that I know would make it better really spicy so if you are not much of a spice person I would definitely steer away from the habaneros but if you don't like spice you can do the lighter chili powders the mild chili powders Add some bell peppers if you're really into fresh vegetables. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Honestly, Texas chili is meat and whatever seasonings you want. <laughs> there are no rules. I, there's, I shouldn't say that. There is only one rule when it comes to Texas chili. Don't put any beans in that. I think there's more cornbread in here. <laughs> That's good. It's gonna be short, y'all. And the last bite. I don't know if it's the last bite, but it's the last testy bite. Sour cream cheese and chives. Also, I'm, I'm going back to the bacon. Some people crisp up their bacon and they just leave it on top. You can do that. Like I said, there's only one rule, don't use beans. Um, I just really love the smokiness of the bacon. I use an applewood smoked bacon. So um, depending on what kind of bacon you have at home, might determine whether or not you want it on top. I've seen some people use like a maple bacon and kind of do like a candy topping to, um, To, I guess I can't think of the word right now but basically to counteract um, the spiciness in the chili Cheers. Mm. oh my god mm. <laughs> I tasted that right away y'all make this make this chili make this chili It's so good. I, I don't have anything else to say. Frankly. Thank you guys for watching. But I'm trying to balance videos where I'm really just teaching you guys with, you know, jumping in and having a conversation and really seeing what everybody's thinking. But before I go out, I just want to say... If you guys like what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, if you're enjoying the content, make sure that you subscribe and share. Mm. Also, for the sous chef family, if you have ideas as to what you want me to cook next, feel free to drop it in the comments. My husband says I can cook everything. I believe in. Please do guys.